No, I need to be There we go. You are live. Have a great meeting. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to General Council for February 27th, 2024. 7th, 2024. Identification of media. I don't see any. And before we get started, um, let's take a moment of silence to honor the community members that we have recently lost. Let's take a moment. Thank you. So number four, adoption of the agenda. Any additions or deletions to the agenda? If not, can I have a mover? Moved by Audrey, second by Carrie. All in favor? Anybody opposed? See none, carried. So we have delegation number five. The first delegation, Andrew Mark Hill. Um, community concerns regarding Six Nations natural gas recent bills. Yep, come on up to the front. Yep. <laughs> yep, and good evening. Yep, and so when you speak, just bring the mic down and then push the button and the red light will come on. Okay, so the floor is yours. So um, I sent the email. I don't know if you just brought your, your hydro bill, your gas bill, or any other fuel bill that comes to your property. I asked them to just so that you can see where I'm reading off because we got pretty much the same bills. You just have to push the button. There you go. One more time. <laughs> One more time. Okay, we'll start with the gas bill. Uh, that's the, the main concern, but I want to compare it with the runway bill that I get delivered to the farm as well as the hydro. Okay, so there's a lot of discrepancies in this uh, gas bill of the cost of what it's doing, right? So I'll give you an example. Like uh, the gas used, say it was $34.00. 35 cents, but it cost me $119 on top of that, okay, to be come to the house, right? So what I did was for Renway, I get diesel delivered to the farm. Okay, they delivered at, uh, to the farm, it cost $30 to deliver 243 liters of diesel. If you uh, factor this gas bill in, as liters, which is only 6.26, it comes out to, uh, where's my thing here? <clears throat> Pardon me? Okay. So I'll just keep going? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so when you factor that out, so what I did was broke it down. So Renway charges 1.11 to deliver my fuel. Okay. So, that turns out to be for the, the charge was 3676 altogether for for 243 liters to be delivered. So they basically it's $36.76 to bring that much to the farm, opposed to a hundred and something for 6.9 liters. See the big discrepancy in that? That's huge. That's a very huge discrepancy from that fuel cost to this, if you put them in liters together. If Renway was bringing gas and put it this way, they would be charging you $6.96. And then on top, they would charge you $27.39 to be delivered. But the gas company here charges you $34.35 to be delivered. Okay, so you see the, you see the difference? The, and here's gas, natural gas is the lowest uh, fuel cost around opposed to anything else, right, to bring it in. So I know a lot of community members were, weren't taking a kind to that, right? So anyway, the second thing is, uh, so that's comparison to Renway. So it's way out of balance from what Renway can bring in my fuel of high liters, less cost than 6.96. So that's one discrepancy, all right? 
then all these other service charges here, they got uh, delivery and transport. Well, it's one or the one or the other, right? There's one of both. I don't see any vehicle coming in transporting that fuel in like Renway does with diesel. And they still charge me cheaper at a liter, which diesel is supposed to be a higher cost, right? So when you look at that, that delivery cost and that uh, transport cost, that's that's way out of the norm for the people down here, right? And uh, that's one of the concerns. And plus they got the service charge there, 6.25. So I have four meters on my property. I don't have a cigarette shop, no, I don't have, I got, I give my daughter a house, I give my son a house, I got a house. Okay, so I get charge, delivery charge for each meter. Hydro brings three meters in, that's my other comparison. I don't get charged with meter costs. They're not allowed, they're not allowed to uh, uh, charge you delivery. So there's no delivery costs on hydro, but our own gas company down here is doing that to the people and their cost is very much higher than Renway or Hydro One. So I don't know, they say Six Nations own the gas, I hear, or they own 51% and who's doing this? So I think somebody has to really sit down and take a look at this because that cost is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And for me being charged for coming in the same laneway, the gas where it pipes in, I'm getting charged three times, right, on top. So there's three meters, three meter charges. I got three hydrometers, no charge, right? No delivery charge for, for uh, hydro, delivery charge for gas. Ren Renway comes in, they transport it in a truck, drop it off, and it's, what, what do you say, a percentage, about 85% less for more? So you, you see where all of this is coming from with all these numbers here, what I'm talking about. That's why I wanted everybody to bring their hydro bill, their gas bill and everything, and then you could calculate the 1.11 and change that gas into liters take Renways and, and you can figure out the bills that way as well. And it's just, it's on call for it, put it that way, because gas is the cheapest form. Now, we had natural gas right across the road. They shut the pipe down. They just uh, plugged it up. And then uh, there's there was other times, I, there's some were other ones that were plugged up on the reserve. I don't see why they don't bring them back. They just, because they were, uh, letting out a little bit of uh, sulfur, meaning your gas was yellow. Everybody, when you're our age, you used to, used to see the yellow coming out of the, on your gas stoves. Well, that's sulfur, right? But there was nothing wrong with it. And it's cheap, right? It's a, a cheaper form of gas. I don't see if we're natural gas and harvest our own down here and not bringing it in wherever you're getting it from. If that's the case, reopen them, revisit them, right? That's what you should be doing. We have our own resources, if you look at it. They were shut down. One was right across the road from me. There was uh, there was one uh, one behind the arena, one down on second line. There was there was gas wells all around here. They all they shut them down. So what she's gonna have to do is honestly sit down, look at your gas bill, look at what they charge with bringing in diesel fuel Look at your hydro bill and just see how ridiculous this is. This gas company is. That is, to me, that's unacceptable. And so, so I, I under, like you know, I met a few other people. They're concerned about the gas bill, the way it was because of the way it's being charged and everything. And they got all the right. They got all the right to do that because that's that's just not right there. So we did bring Tracy Sky. She's the manager of Six Nations Gas Company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because all everyone around mm -hmm. here pays pays the bill. Also, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So did you want to um, come up to the front before that, um, Helen? Oh, I just wanted to let you know the only reason you don't have a delivery on your hydro bill is because Chief Ava Hills Council went and worked with the government to take the delivery bill off the hydro bill for First Nations people. That that's why correct. it's not there. I'm well aware, but that's what I'm saying. So why is our gas mm -hmm. company doing that? 
charge the rest. Well, of yeah, it'd be nice if the gas right? company would do that too. This, the gas our own gas company shouldn't be doing that if the hydro company uh, is not permitted to do that, right? Okay. Um, if you could just hit your mic and then go go ahead, Tracy. Okay, so I'm I'm not exactly sure of the question other than that that you do want to know about the delivery charges and the transportation charges and the gas charges, correct? Yes. Um, okay, so when you see all of the um, different charges on the bill, like I I don't have problems sitting with you if you want to come in and I can explain no, it more in detail. That part. Okay. That still, that still doesn't compare to what I just uh, showed here. Okay. The comparison with liter to liter. If you change those cubics into liters and then calculate that what Renway does, that's way out of norm. I can't answer for Renway and I can't answer for um, Hydro. Um, I do know that Council did have an agreement with Ontario Hydro to eliminate the delivery charges. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm assuming it's because there's the towers that run throughout the reserve. Um, but Enbridge is the one who delivers our gas. They don't have no infrastructure on the reserve. The commodity, which is the gas use, the carbon, and the transportation, those are all costs to us. Those are what we pay Shell, what we pay the government, and what we pay Enbridge. The money that the company uses to operate is the delivery funds. So that 14 and a half cents is what we use to operate and you know that is for the sole operations of the building everything else or business everything else is all direct in and out well, still we factored this in this way show it it still does not compare so if you switch that to leaders like renway actually transported in right your transport, you can't, you shouldn't even be putting transport. It's either one or the other, because I don't see any trucks coming in. That's what I'm saying, and uh, being dropped off just like what Renway does. And then when Renway leaves, hey, my fuels have been delivered, done. That's the concept of transport and delivery. Okay, so what what happens is we purchase our gas from Shell. Shell has to get it transport transported to the um, storage center, and then to our meter stations, which there's two, one on third line and one on highway 54. Um, in order to do that, we have to use Enbridge's pipeline. And that's where the transportation comes in because Enbridge charges us to use their pipeline. And the delivery is from the meter station to your home. And the reason why that's so high is because like I said, that's the funds that Six Nations Natural Gas uses to operate. Well, I think you should be revisiting because those, the, with how you're ever figuring those out, the numbers compares to the, the actual delivery trucks coming in with fuel that's cost more or less when natural gas is the cheapest. And the, the other thing I don't understand is why you're allowing taxes to come through the door here. Mike. You're introducing the taxes through the door. Why are you doing that? That's a, that I don't understand. This is for all the van office, right? I'm just saying right. that that should be set at, stopped at the door. Oh, okay. That should be stopped at the front door and not being in here. And then we got to chase those taxes. This van should be standing up and telling hydro, no. Gas, no. This, no, right? That comes in. Even the trucks that are delivering the fuel. Like, I'm being charged carbon, but look at my carbon tax on my, on Renway bill. Look at this. What's yours? What, what do you got on your gas? Let's see here. Twelve point three nine percent. Twelve point. It is cost nine dollars and seventy four cents to bring two hundred and forty three liters tax. See the tax there? Nine seventy four dollars. That's it. Comparison to yours. Yours is here's. Where's your tax thing? Right here. Carbon tax twenty nine ninety four for six point two liters. Opposed to two, four, 143 liters. Tell me where that's the straight up. Again, we don't have control over that, and it will go up again in April. Um, we have to go by the going market rates for carbon. Um, go ahead, Elena. Tracy, you'll have to forgive me. I don't 
use Six Nations natural gas, mm -hmm. what are all the charges on a bill, like line items, and what are the percentages? I got it right there if you want me to read it out. Sure. Okay. You, you would know the percentages, though. You would have numbers, right? Like, what are the percentages? The percentages yeah. for the bill? I don't have the percentages in front of me. But you said carbon, the carbon tax is 12 point? Oh, 3, 9 percent, yes. Um, on, like, what is that calculated on? That's from the government. No, but it, it's just on the gas portion of the per cubic meter. On cubic meter. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and the delivery is point one four five. That's so fourteen and a half cents per cubic meter. The transportation is point zero nine four four. Four. And the commodity for the gas use is 0.1589. Thank you. You're welcome. Hazel, could you read out all of those transportation um, on your bill there? On my bill here? Yeah. Okay. So we'll start out with the service charge was 6.25. The federal carbon tax of 2084 on this bill, delivery 3593, and transport is 2227. Do you mind if I look at your bill for a second? Hmm? Do you mind if I look at your bill? Yeah, go ahead. So he used 266.14544 cubic meters for the month. Got up here, gas usage right yeah. here. Gas usage is 2957, right? Right. Oh, I would just, um, I have to agree with him that the prices are so darn high because this month my gas bill was 428 when in a summer it's like not even $50. So, you use more gas in the winter than yeah. In the that, I understand yeah. that, like the heating costs, right? Right. But what adds up is that delivery, that transportation. That's outrageous what they charge. And why would Enbridge charge you to use your lot, use their lines to transport that here when they're the deliverer of the of the gas? I can't answer that. See, they're like it's like a double charge they're doing on us. Well, it's more than a double charge when you look at it, but mm -hmm. what they're doing and, and bringing it in here, right? Natural gas just throws through. Nobody, you don't see anybody come from natural gas in months and months around my place. I've seen them, right? And the other just thing I have uh, with about natural gas is, again, those three meters that are sitting just in this one main area here, my daughter can't get it switched over to her name because they got to have $450 down, and that's going to stay until... That'll stay in their care until I die, until the land goes in there, until the house goes into her name, right? So that does that sound right? But hydro, switch it over, switch it over. All their names are in the hydro, not gas, not natural gas here. So I don't get what's what's going on or what who's running that type of program. But that's uh, it's not right. So yep. now I actually got four gas meters in my name. And my, but they're the the other ones are my kids, not mine. Just because I'm holding the lands until I pass, and then that then that's their inheritance, right? Because of that, they want four hundred fifty dollars a meter, then to go in, and then if I stick around for another twenty years, who's gonna have that uh, interest and everything else, right? That just that's just not right. Go ahead, Dad. I just wanted a further comment with regard to the meters. I had an issue with that myself, and they started charging us for meter costs. So I inquired with um, the gas company in Brantford, Union Gas. I said, is it reasonable for a company to charge you for the meter that they use to sell their product? They said, no, they shouldn't be doing that. So I had called Nick when he was still there. Well, he was very annoyed that I did that, but he, um, paid me back all that meter cost that I had paid. 
I wasn't paying it at first, but all of a sudden they start charging me. See, I agree with that. It's uh, the way they're charged because Renway sits a, a diesel tank on my property and gave me a great big diesel pump to pump it out. Yeah. It was in no charge whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Audrey? Nice to meet you. Welcome to ACI and group. I want to know what, to, first of all, there have been a lot of complaints about gas. I think everybody's complaining about gas. As you know, Tracy, you look every January we do here. Well, it's every month. So what kind of signed agreements do you have with Enbridge to use their uh, pipes to carry the gas? Are there agreements? <clears throat> I don't have the agreement with me. Um, however, what happens is they give us um, a daily quantity. It's called DCQ. And we have to, and it, it's, right now it's 1100 So we have to pay them our monthly demand charge for 72,777 cubic meters. And that's, I, I, like I said, I don't have the agreement in front of me. But after that, we pay, you know, a third of a cent for every cubic meter that they deliver to us. And that's on behalf of Shell. Because like I said, we buy our gas from Shell, which gets transported to the storage center. And from there, and, and we use... Ambridge's pipelines. So they're not, they don't let us use it for free. They just, you know, they. they Where is the storage center? There's one at <clears throat> Dawn and there's one in Parkway. So do you have anything that says that you have to use Enbridge? Or is it possible for Six Nations to lay down uh, gas pipelines? Oh gosh, that would be crazy. I mean, it would, that would be crazy because we would have to take. From our meter stations, we would have to have direct pipes to Don, to Parkway, and we would have to get the rights to the infrastructure to put in that land on all the lands in Ontario to these places. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, like, I don't have the number in front of me, but just to put the main pipe um, for six inch from third line to Highway 54. Like, like I said, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it was crazy. Like, it, it's very expensive. But possible. Anything's possible. Well, you know, when we look at it, like with, say, Renway, for instance, right? They want your business. They're going to bring it to you. They're going to sell it to you. They're going to make a profit. And like I showed a little bit of profit, what they make off of this 240 liters, mm -hmm. I get paid, I have to pay all together after, the, like I said, the exercise tax, which shouldn't be on there. That's a, that's a, another no-no that you guys are letting through here mm -hmm. is in uh, 280 all together for 240 liters. Your six point, your six, uh, 9.9 liters, Google, uh, Google faculty they're in, who has, uh, you made a profit of twenty seven thirty nine, whereas our and you charged uh, thirty four thirty five, and on top of one nineteen eighty one. Diesel charged thirty six altogether. They got twenty seven and nine. That's counting that federal. So it's like if you look at all those the way you break it down, now you're getting we're the people here are getting ripped. That's as simple as that. You know. You know, we are we shouldn't be, but we are very comparable to to Enbridge. Um over the past ten years, when you look at everything factored in, our costs were twenty three percent less over the, the twenty three years. In reality we should be more because they have three three point eight million customers. We have less than three thousand. They charge almost $25 a month for their service charge. If you multiply that by, you know, 4 million customers, they're getting 100 million just in their service charges. 
So, you know, they have the customer base that we do not have. So our rates are going to be a little bit higher. You know, we have to be able to operate and sustain ourselves because we don't want to go into bankruptcy. Well, he's certainly not going into bankruptcy with that. That's for sure with the cost. Like, you, you don't even have a lot of uh, maintenance technically because you got them, the gas lines are all new and underground, so you don't really have a whole lot of maintenance going on. We do. And uh, whereas, whereas you got trucking, they got a lot of maintenance, trucking, and yet they're still a lot cheaper. By percentage-wise, they're about 80% cheaper. And here's natural gas is the cheapest e form of, of uh, heat, heat resource. So I have a few more questions. Uh, go ahead, Elena, then Helen. Tracy, I don't want you to tell me anything you can't since it's an open meeting, but the, the agreement between Enbridge and Six Nations Natural Gas, is that who negotiates that and how often is that revisited? It's we, we look at it annually. Is it, and the it board? between us and Enbridge? The the natural gas myself, board? yeah. We negotiate it? We don't negotiate it. There's we no just, negotiation? No, no, there hasn't been no negotiations in, like, I don't even know how long, probably 30 years in the fact that they have set rates, but they're rate regulated through the OEB. So the OEB tells them what they can charge, what they can and can't charge. We do have a mediator. We do have an OEB intervener on our behalf um, who ensures that everything is done accordingly and that the rates are within their means. Okay. So they do they do actually have um, the first time in eight years that a rate rebasing that's going on. So, you know, so we, we might see a little bit of a, I, I don't, I can't even comment on that because that's all confidential right now. Yeah, and if there were, would any decreases, would that be passed on to the consumer, the of end consumer? Of course it would, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Helen? So and Enbridge does the trans charges for the transporting, right? Pardon me? They charge for the transporting. Correct. Enbridge? I remember last council I brought it up at council that we should try to meet with Enbridge and see if we can get rid of the that transport charges, just like we got rid of the hydro ones. Uh, unfortunately, not it never went anywhere. So I'm going to make the same suggestion to this council that we we start looking at meeting with Enbridge to see if we can get those charges off because it costs, like I said, it's costing a lot of money for people. And we, we're, we're, the, we're the poorest people in the country and right. we're having to pay these high gas bills and it's for the carbon tax, like Tracy said, that carbon tax is going to go up, keep going up, up till 2030 because they're right. trying to discourage everybody from using natural gas. In fact, I had raised an issue to council a couple of weeks ago that we need to meet with the National Gas Board because by 2030, you, the South Mila, you guys are going to be out of business yeah. because they're getting rid of natural gas. And they want everybody to get heat pumps and they want everybody to get some kind of reactors, um, which is going to cost money for our community because nobody has money. So there's a big issue with that carbon tax. And unfortunately, the chiefs of Ontario and the AFN never really fought to keep that carbon tax from applying on reserve because we shouldn't be paying it. I mean, you pay it every time you get a liter of gas too, you just don't know you're paying it. And we shouldn't be. But leadership never really fought against it back when it started, when last year, two years ago? 2016, yeah, they never really fought against it. But anyway, those are political issues that has to be dealt with. So I'm suggesting that council to begin with, we could maybe even just write a letter to Enbridge saying we want to talk about this transport charge to the reserve. Um, like I mentioned, Enbridge doesn't have any infrastructure throughout the reserve. They stop bordering the reserve. I know. However, but if they want new projects on Six Nations land outside of this reserve, then your negotiations are powerful. Right. So that's my suggestion. I know it doesn't help you in your situation right now. I pay gas too, so I know what well, you're going through. The reason I'm here is because a lot of people are complaining, complaining about it. 
And I said, yeah, they, it's true. Because if you look at it, how do you justify delivering to one property, have three delivery charges, three carbon tax times all, all in the same time? How do you, how do you uh, justify that? You have three houses, you have three different meters. Yeah, but it's and all delivery to one place and one transfer, not, not, not three, three and three. Can I it's charged up? per cubic oh. meter. Go ahead. And a follow up, what I'm thinking too is it's really hard for the natural gas company because they run into a lot of debt every year. There's a lot of people that don't pay their hydro bills and they have to come, they have to pretty much just absorb that cost because people aren't paying it. This is true. So if they could, if everybody paid their gas bill, they would have more money to operate with, but it's really difficult getting people to pay their gas bill. Most people do, but there is a whole slew of people that don't do it, and it, it's costly. And the gas comes So that's a concern as well. Good for you. I wish they were all. I have um, Amos, then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, I'm just new to all of this. So is the gas company, um, is it run on its own? Does it have its own board? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna, I, some of you might know I live at the Mush Hall, right? So my Enbridge bill like, was last month was like 110. I mean, mind you, I don't have the heat going like 90, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but, and then my sister who lives here showed me her bill and I, I couldn't believe it. So what would happen if we all went to Enbridge and become customers of Enbridge? We own, Six Nation Natural Gas owns the franchise for um, the reserve, but the difference, Enbridge is able to purchase their gas monthly. We buy in layers. So we buy it through a portfolio method but that protects us because last year they were seeing um, gas prices of $15, $20 per gigajoule. Ours average around $5. So that protects us over the longevity of every, everything. And we can, it smooths out the transition so that we can budget for what we're going to spend in gas for the next year, two years, three years, depending on our contracts, because we have several. Um, when gas prices are low, we try to add on to the ones that are going to expire first at the cheaper rates. Um, unfortunately, you know, there was a decrease in gas back in the fall and early winter. Enbridge was able to purchase gas at those low prices, but ours were, was already secured, so we couldn't. However, two years ago, Enbridge couldn't touch our rates because we were able to have, you know, the $5 per gigajoule where they're paying $15. So it's a very volatile industry. Um, sometimes it's to our benefit, sometimes it isn't, most times it is to our benefit. And we did do a, a 10 year comparison. And of that, within the last 10 years, what we did is we took uh, 2014 rates for gas, transportation, delivery, and then we took our 2023 rates for, and then January of 2024. The overall difference was $302 for the entire year. Of that, 248 was carbon and 54 was the increase. Um, their 10 year inflation was 23%. Our inflation was 7%. Um, so we do try to keep our cost low we don't our our bottom line for our profit is low and it's for affordability you know and and i know you say it's hard to afford this and i and i can appreciate that but we are a small utility company um we're able to provide natural gas um so that we could like we had one customer, they paid $1,000 for propane in December. And well, they came to us and they said, we can't afford this anymore. Can we get natural gas? So they got natural gas and they told us, they said, you know, our house is warmer because since we got natural gas, we were paying $1,000 per month for 
December and January months because it was so cold. So, you know, natural gas is more affordable than other heating sources. I'm not sure how electricity would be at this point because there is no delivery charge, but I do know it is cheaper than oil and propane. Okay. So just because you have a follow up, Amos. Yeah. Do you offer to the customers at home here um, a plan where, because of course our heating requirements through from November, December, January, April, probably February, and then it, it kind of levels out all summer, right? Right. right. Are there plans that yes. you offer the yes, homeowner? Yes, we have an equal billing plan. Okay. So that you pay the same amount every yeah. month for eleven months, and then we do have an adjustment month. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So just along with what Helen said, um, if it's possible to work with um, my office mm -hmm. and even your board, because I see Steve's here, who who chairs it. Um, to work together, and if it's something to meet with Enbridge, I don't, you know, I don't think it's ever been done. So let's start there because the community is upset, and you know, like we said, everybody around the table <laughs> is paying the high high bills. Right, right. So let's start there and work together, and um, we'll go from there for next sure. steps. Is that okay? I know it's not a good thing. Here. But I want to I want to say thank you for coming in though, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Again, um, I, thank you for coming in. Also, Tracy, thank you for coming, and your staff, and also Steve for coming. Can I have a mover um, as information? Moved by Elena, seconder, second by Audrey. All in favor? We oppose. See none. Carried. Thank you. Have a great night. So the second one, I'm not sure if she's here. I don't see her. No. Okay. So number two, she's not here. Can we move to number six? Adoption to the general council minutes for February 13th. If there's no move by Carrie, seconder. Second by Greg, all in favor. Anybody opposed? Seen uncarried. Any council reports or meetings attended? I don't see any. So let's move to number eight. Um, I just have, again, um, community safety for number eight is uh, we still continue to work with Ontario on the matter of illegal dumping. And again, if anyone sees vehicles like dump trucks, um, dumping waste on the reserve, please report it immediately um, to the police so we can um, go from there. There's no updates from the chief's office. Scheduling. So scheduling recommendation 10-1, the Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council delegate Sherry Lynn, Chief Sherry Lynn Hill to attend the little NHL Six Nations Blackhawks U13 female hockey team to attend the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto on Monday, March 11th, 2024. So the team is going to um, the Hockey Hall of Fame and they asked for me to attend with them. So if there's a mover, I've changed my schedule to go. Uh, moved by Greg, second by Dean. All in favor? Anybody opposed? See none, carried. Wave second reading. Moved by Greg, second by Dean. All in favor? Be opposed? See none carried. Recommendation 10-2. So this is just for, um, for the community, but also the counselors. The Family Wellbeing Program is hosting a, a community breakfast on March 16th. The Family Wellbeing Team is looking for volunteers to help serve um, the community. So any counselors that are, are available to assist with the breakfast, on um, March 16th, it's a Saturday from 8.30 to 11.30. And again, until supplies last. So if you're available, council, can you put it in your um, calendars to serve? <laughs> okay, I guess I have to, 
um, RSVP who's going to be able to attend on that Saturday to um, serve. I will be able to go. Okay, we have Amos, Helen, Dean, Greg, and that's it. Okay, thank you. And um, that's it for um, tonight. So a motion to adjourn. Did you want to? Yeah, she's not here. So, and Steve didn't know it was <laughs> being presented. So <laughs> that's why I just, so if um, Arlene does come, we'll just put her on the next agenda. Is that okay? Okay. Did you want to speak to it? Okay. Oh, okay. So we're going to go back to delegation number two. It was Arlene Martin and Steve Williams on the project We Swim Together. Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know it was on the agenda until you showed it to me. Um, Arlene said she was going to set up a meeting with council and myself um, to talk about this project. She came to me last year and he said, what do you think about a, um, a swimming pool complex? I said, I think it's a great idea for the community. She wanted something similar to uh, the Wayne Gretzky Center, you know, with the, the two different swimming pools um, for the handicap and everything, and, um, a track. Um, so I said, I have no problem with that. I like the idea. Um, we can certainly start doing some fundraising with some of the other tobacco manufacturers. Uh, I said, GRE was, gonna, GRE was not going to pay for it all. Um, she looked at it. I said, where are we going to put it? She said, behind the community hall. I said, well, you've got to get council permission. It's their land. Um, so that's basically what it was. And I know she's got, a, like I said, a PowerPoint presentation. I went to Oakville um, to see the one that was being built at the time. And it's fantastic. The recycled water. They do a, a lot of things there. And it's, it's, a, it's a very nice complex in o Oakville. And um, I'm sure if you want to see it, I'm sure people will uh, let you go there and look at it. Um, but yeah, that's basically all it, all it was. And I know we're supposed to, she was going to come up with some numbers, pricing what it would cost. Um, I think last year she said it was like six million bucks, and I said I can't be right. It seems like it would be bigger than that. But so she was looking up up new new numbers and everything with the guy that was uh, pushing the for it. So that's basically all it is. So if you're interested in it, I'm certainly when Arlene gets gets here, we can have a little more discussion. Great, thank you for for that, Steve. Um, Greg, then Helen. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Steve. Um, because a lot of these uh, recreation facilities, you know, run at a at a deficit rate, like because uh, they have to be subsidized by the uh, municipality, uh, the community, right? It would be good to see and look into those numbers as well as terms of its, you know, operation every annual the annual operation of that facility, you know, because most likely it wouldn't it wouldn't pay for itself, that's for sure. Um, but I think operation costs, like for example, Brantford, and I think they run a little bit of a deficit and. But that's part of recreation, right? But uh, what, what we're looking at, Greg, just so you understand it, we're looking at doing fundraising um, to help some of those costs as well and have people donate. Um, you know, if there's going to be a, a free to go swim or there's a fee to it, that would go toward the operation as well. Um, hopefully we won't get in the same discussion we just had about the fees, fees too high, but hopefully we can get there at some point. And again, Council, this was all in the drop box. For you to um, see. Yep, go ahead, Helen. Yeah, I would suggest talking to Cheryl Henhock. I mean, every time we do a survey in the community, that's one of the top things is a swimming pool. But Cheryl's done a lot of research on them and everything, and uh, they're very costly to operate. So you might want to talk to her about numbers because she's done a lot of research on that kind of stuff. Okay, thank you. So I was just talking to Nathan that we will send what was given to us for her to review and stuff. So then we can meet again. Okay, thank you. Can I have a mover to accept his information? Moved by Amos, second by Greg. All in favor? You may opposed, seen uncarried. And again, before we motion to adjourn, thank you everyone for joining us tonight and have a great night. A motion to adjourn. Move. <laughs> Go ahead, Mom. I will be available on the 16th for breakfast. Thank you. Thank you. A motion to adjourn. Moved by Elena. Second by Amos. All in favor? May opposed. Seen and carried.
Thank you for joining us.